if a bee has ever stung you, and you could tell me where that bee stung you on your body or where you were when that happened, please raise your hand. Okay? And if a person has ever stung you, and you could tell me that person's name, what that person said, what they did, how it made you feel, please raise your hand. Bee stings hurt so much, they're hard to forget, right? I have been stung so many times, I have lost count. I was bullied in seventh grade. In 10th grade, I brought a boy to a winter formal, and I could not find him at the end of the night. And when I found him, I found him making out with my best friend. Awesome, right? Good times. <laughs> Professionally speaking, don't even get me started. I've auditioned for so many reporter jobs. I've traveled all over the country for interviews, only to be told time and time again, you're not enough. You're not what we're looking for. So I'm not standing here today as some beekeeper who has been under a mask or and in body armor protected from bee stings. Nope. I'm just like you. I've been hurt too. But this is why I love bees. I love bees because bees remind us every day we get to choose our future. We get to decide, are we going to be stung and then turn around and sting someone else? Or are we going to be stung and turn around and find a way to make this world sweeter? Are we going to find a way to make honey? Because every day we face that choice. Will we be bitter or will we be better? I first learned I had this decision to make when I was around your age. Now what I want you to understand was I was the president of my class. I was an editor of the yearbook. I was in school plays. I played sports. One of those kids who always had a smile on her face. Most people in my high school thought I was a busy bee because they thought I just wanted to put things on my college resume. I have amazing parents. I have an amazing sister. No one in high school knew how much I was hurting. And I first learned I could make honey or I could sting because of something that was happening to me every night at home. Here was the scenario. I would be sleeping, and I would feel someone sit down at the edge of my bed, and I would open up my eyes, and I would see my grandmother there. I would not say a word to her, and she would not say a word to me. We would both get up, walk down the hall, and into the bathroom. And I would sit down on the very cold bathroom floor as she stood above the toilet and would brush hair away from her latest chemotherapy treatment and watch it fall. And I was hurting, and I was angry. I was angry because this woman survived the Holocaust. She took a boat with my grandfather after the Holocaust when my mom was two years old, only to face anti-Semitism here. And now cancer was going to take her away from our family? And I realized I had a decision to make. I could go to school the next day and take out my anger on everyone around me. Or I could go to school the next day and be nice because I didn't know what other people were going home to when they got home from school. And I chose B. I chose B because I did not want my future based on breaking another person's spirit in order to fix me. I knew it never would. And I chose B because I knew, fundamentally, that if I could make someone's day better, someone's life better, I would probably feel better too. Think about why bees sting in general. It's their defense mechanism. And what happens to a bee after it stings? It's not a happy ending. So why for myself, why would I choose a life where I would go out and hurt other people only to lose a piece of me every time when I had everything to gain? And I learned that I could actually do this as a career when I was watching a talk show host named Phil Donahue with my grandmother. Anybody know who Phil Donahue is other than my parents? Okay, a couple, because I'm kind of a dinosaur. I get it, it's no big deal. So Phil Donahue was this awesome talk show host, and there was a woman one day crying on the set, and at the end of the episode, it looked like she felt better because Donahue gave her advice, the guest psychologist gave her advice, and I thought, my goodness, how amazing of a career would it be to be able to share one person's story and help lots of people at the same time? And then I realized I actually could be a change maker, even at your age, because you don't need to be at a certain age or stage of your life to make a change. And this story comes from when I was 16 years old. I'm obsessed with twins, no one knows why, another really random fact about me, but my mom, knowing this, saved a newspaper article for me to read because it was about a woman in Iowa who'd given birth to seven babies at once. And below, wow, I know, right? It's like pre mom, it's a big deal, it's like the 1990s. So the article below this woman's story was a story about a woman in D.C. who had just given birth to six. One article went on to say the family was lavish with gifts left and right, the other, this family has been forgotten. The family in Iowa was white, and the family in D.C. was black, and I could not understand how we were here. So I went to school the next day and I said to my principal, we have to have an emergency class meeting, we need to help this family in D.C. 
People thought I was crazy. They never thought I would find the family. Most people, again, thinking I'm doing this for my college resume, they didn't get it. But I did not let them derail me or deter me. I let them drive me. And I eventually found a nonprofit and a lawyer working with the family. I convinced my principal to give my class a day off of school because by now we'd raised $1,000 and we bought them everything off of their wish list. And when we took the four and a half hour trip to Washington, D.C., media outlets covered my class. And in time, this family got more and more media attention. And they ended up getting a house, a van, and free college tuition for the kids. The following year, they came to my high school graduation. And 18 years later, because we know I'm a dinosaur, 18 years later, I got to go to theirs. Now, that's the outcome when you're a change maker. But here's the input. You have to know, you have to be brave, because people will want to shoo you away, not because they think you will sting them, but because they won't understand why you feel the need to change anything at all. They may question your motives, they may not have anything they're as passionate about, and resent the fact that you do. Be the change anyway. You may hear so many no's before you hear one yes. You may hear, I already give to this and that before you raise a dollar. Be the change anyway. And while you're at it, be open. Affluence, as you know, affluence is not a requirement for influence. You do not need to be the loudest person in the room to make a difference. When I was with my grandmother, I did not say a word. And don't be so consumed with your ideas that you don't hear other people around you. Be open to the fact that the people who become your teammates and your partners in crime, they may not be your friends today. They may not look like you. They may not be anywhere in your periphery at this stage of your life. They may be coming into it. Be open to that. And don't be afraid to take a break. Don't be afraid to go out and socialize with your colony, to really appreciate your hive, because you can't be so consumed with changing the world that you miss out on spending time with the people who are your world. And I promise you, if you can be brave and you can be open and you can be kind to yourself and to others, if you can see the world through lenses that you don't have to do everything to make the world a better place, but every day and every time you get stung, you can do something, you will be a change maker. And then the next time, a boy, a girl, a bully, a friend, a college admissions counselor, a future employer, the next time someone does not see your worth, being a change maker will always help you know your value. And the next time life is so noisy, you can't hear your own voice, being a change maker will help you find it. And then when you're my age, and you're standing on a stage like this, you won't just look back and be proud of what you have done, You'll be proud of who you have become and who you have inspired others to be. People ask me all the time, why do you even bother? At 35, I can promise you it's not for my college resume. It's not to be promoted, it's not to be liked, it's not to impress anyone. I'm just as proud of who I am when no one's watching me as I am when I'm sitting and anchoring the news. I do it because I'm just one bee but I can go from flower to flower and spread this one idea, and that is you do not need to sting anyone to be the change you want to be in your life or the change you want to be in this world. And for that, I will keep going from flower to flower. Do you even know how many bees it takes to make one teaspoon of honey? Twelve. One bee will spend its entire life to only make one-twelfth of a teaspoon. So don't ever say your one small act doesn't matter because it does. And I want to thank you so much for your time and for listening to me today, but I really want to thank my dad and my queen bee, my mom, who my dad has always called honey my entire life, and I'm just making that connection. <laughs> thank you, really, from the bottom of my heart to the two of you for always letting me be me. Thank you. <laughs>